Hey everybody, welcome to PBI Radio. It's Chris Guns, and I'm being joined by my colleague, Pro Boxing Insider's own, Elliot Torres Vasquez. What's up, Big L? Big L, we're going to be joined by Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. What do you know about Eddie? Well, Eddie's a great person, uh, first, and fighter second, and a uh, great trainer, and it's an honor to uh, have him on the show. Yes, it is an honor. Let's get him on the line. My pleasure, buddy. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, thanks for joining us again at PBI Radio. Appreciate your time. No problem. Eddie, you've got former heavyweight champion Hasim Rockman. He's scheduled to fight Alexander Povetkin on September 29th. There's some bad blood in this fight, isn't there? Hasim felt like they dissed him by not putting him on the fight poster. It is strange, though, because he is the former heavyweight champ, has a huge name, still dangerous. Doesn't make sense, does it? find out uh, with that blatant disrespect of the championship that he held. I mean, he was world champion when the veteran was playing with cat shit and thought it was bubble gum. Mm. You know what I'm saying? His whole crew, blatant disrespect. But, you know what? They're overlooking him, and that's cool. That's real cool. Mm-hmm. You know, we know going in there that we have to knock him out to win, and that's our intent. Going in there to knock him clean out. Yeah. How much did it bother Hasim when he was there and he saw that fight poster? What did he say to you after? It bothered him a lot. It bothered him a lot. But at the end of the day, it's my job to keep him calm and cool and collective and go on with the, with the situation where we're going to methodically break him down. You know, he's going to be get hit so hard. He's never been hit that much in his life and so hard in his life that the way Hashem is going to hit him. Mm, I believe it. I feel it, and I hear it in your voice. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the blatant disrespect. Yeah. But, and that's cool. That's cool. Go over the territory. But it's too bad the, the people, his, his people are not going to feel it. But Pavekia is going to feel it. Believe me. He's going to feel it. And they talked about they got Costa Zoo as trainer. Mm-hmm. What, what I forgot, Costa Zoo don't know. <laughs> that's just basically it. <laughs> you know, that's basically yeah. it. Yeah. We, look at we going, like I said, we're going to Germany with one thing in mind, to knock him out. And for the people who might not know, they might not have heard the story, but they said they either had to put an old picture of Hasim on the poster or... Show him as fat as he is. Now, that's crazy because Pavekin's not exactly a body beautiful either. <laughs> you know? Exactly, exactly. But, you know, the bottom line is he's going to pay. That's it. And he's going to pay. And how about... And that's just how that is. Yeah. How about you, Will? What do you got to say? Yeah, this is uh, Elliot Vasquez. Um, yeah, I want to talk about the Hafsim Rockman. You mentioned that they, you know... You, he almost has to knock him out to win the fight. Um, Povetkin has never met anybody, you know, that has the kind of power, Hussein Rockman, to put away a fight with one punch. Um, is, is that the way that the training is going, or can you even talk about it? I mean, are you guys going for the knockout, or if it comes, you'll take it? Because Hussein does have a, a, you know, heavy hand. Just like this here. We're going to go in there, and we're going to go right to him. Ain't nobody going to have time to be dancing this and dancing that. With the, when the bell rings, we're going to go right to him and let our hands go. You know, we're going to knock him out. That's the bottom line. We're gonna, believe me, if he runs, we, we're going to beat him up so bad that he may quit himself. Mm. You know, when he when he fought Huck, and Huck beat him fair and square. Yeah. You know, so we know how they roll over there. You know, believe me, if we don't knock him out, I guarantee you, he will never fight again. Mm-hmm. But I beat him up that bad. Let me ask you this, Eddie. What kind of shape did, did Hasim come back to the gym after healing up from his injury? Oh, he, at that point, he was in about uh, 50% shape. Because mm-hmm. the injury kind of threw us off a little bit. But we still kept running. We still kept running. Yeah. You know, the whole thing, you know, we'd run up in Mount Charleston. Five o'clock in the morning, you know it's it's eight thousand square feet up in the air. Yeah, no. that's that's where we get our conditioning from. And when do you leave for Germany? 
I think we leave on the 21st of this month. 21st. Well, not, not too much time over there. What's the, what do you see as the difference in Germany? Is it more exciting? How do the people, is it a more exciting atmosphere? Oh, Germany's cool. I've been over there a few times. I mean, I like Germany. I like the German people. I like what they stand for. I mean, I've been cool with them for the longest, you know, and we find a, a Russian in Germany. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's yeah. cool. I, we got mm -hmm. no problem. All I want is a referee that can count to 10. That's all I want. And that's it. It won't be too hey, hard to Eddie, find. Um, <laughs> you mentioned Casa Azul earlier. Do you think that, you know, having one training camp with uh, Povican is enough to, you know, change uh, his, you know, his direction of Povican? Or what, what do you think about that? Let me tell you something. Again, what I forgot, Casa Azul don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not taking any weight, anything away from him. He is the ability of being a great champion. But, it, I mean, you're not going to come in overnight and think you're going to make that guy uh, Muhammad Ali. It ain't happening. You know, and if he stands there in front of Hasid, he's getting knocked out. Mm -hmm. But he's getting knocked out. That's the bottom line. Go on, El. Keep going. Ask, ask questions you've got to ask, and... I took yeah, a lot um, of time and I and I it, butted in. I want to take it to another fight, if we may. Uh, uh, this weekend, big fight. Andre Ward takes on uh, Chad Dawson, and I know in the past you trained Chad Dawson for a couple of championship fights. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, this is a high-profile you know fight that's going to be fought in Ward's backyard of Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. And do you think a fight of this magnitude should be in a person's hometown, or should it be in a neutral um, thing? Not at all. Well, listen, we're all going to watch this on HBO. You know, your TV don't lie. <laughs> you know, I guess you have the very knowledge to win the game. Your TVs don't lie. You can see who's going to win the fight. You can, I mean, it's going to be a great fight. And I, I commend both of the guys for stepping to the plate in the prime of their careers to put on a, a magnificent show. And what do you think about the fact that Chad kind of gave everything away. Would you, what if you still tr were in Chad's corner? What would you What would you advise him to do? Would you tell him to not necessarily go to Andre's hometown or not go all the way down to 168? No, not, 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 you know, first of all, going to Andre's hometown, listen, again, this is going to be on, on HBO with millions are going to see this. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, I don't think the judges are going to make the mistake that a lot of the other judges have made, such as Pacquiao Bradley, that was, you know, blatantly regardless of all the officials of that judge that fight or had even something to do with the fight. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just how that is. But again, listen, when you fight when you're a champion, put it this way, when you're a champion, no matter where the ring is at, that's supposed to be your home. Yep. Not for in Africa, Paris, all over the world. Yeah. You know, I knew what I had to do. I gotta knock these guys out because I'm not gonna get it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And you, you mm -hmm. know Chad almost as well as anybody in the sport does. What, what, what do you have to say about Chad as a fighter? Boxer, and, 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 and the event that he keeps Andre Ward on the end of his punches mm -hmm. can do damage. Yeah. What do you. No, he can do damage. So yeah, you, right now, Eddie, the, the odds of that fight are uh, against four to, one. four to one. What What do you think about that? Do you think that's you know too much of an odds? Um, There's too much to be. Mm -hmm. I would think that it's too much, but. If I'm not mistaken, Andre is going to try to put a little bit of pressure on Chad. And he's going to make Chad fight. And uh, the last time that when I had Chad is when I told him to step to John Pascal with a left uppercut. And I've been telling him to do that since round one. He finally did it in round 11. 
And he stood that kid straight up in there. The kid was out of his feet. You know, and then he grabbed him and butted him. Mm-hmm. But that's boxing. I'm, I'm just, the you know, I just, I'm predicting a great fight. I'm not predicting a winner because, you know, I know I'm there very well. And I know Chad very well. And I don't want people to think that I have bad feelings toward Chad because we broke up. I don't have bad feelings. You know, when one door closes, many open. And that's the way it's been in my career. The doors are still open for me. Mm. I just wish, and I, I wish both of those guys good luck. You know, and just, I hope nobody gets hurt. Yeah, hope not. Anything else on that fight, Big O? No, no, not on that fight. But I, I wanted to ask you something on, for that fight date. Uh, on Saturday, there's so many fights on that day. Well, one, one fight was canceled. It was the... Rondell Bailey versus uh, uh, Alexander fight, but um, do you yeah. think do you think that having so many fights on the same day hurts or does it help boxing? Because there's so many fights on that day. I mean, Klitschko fights that night. You have the war fight, and you would have had another show on Showtime if the Bailey fight would have went on. What do you what do you think about that? I think the the, the the fights, the two fights that are going to be here, is going to hurt boxing. You mm-hmm. know, is uh. I'm talking about Canelo Lopez and uh, Martinez and Chavez. That's that's gonna hurt boxing. Yeah, yeah. That was my other fight yeah. that I was gonna mention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that all the other fights are, are perfect. I mean, listen, boxing has been in the low. Now, it, like I told everybody, every four years, boxing springs alive. We got the Olympics that just uh, ended. And uh, a lot of these guys, gold medalists, silver medalists, bronze medalists, are going to turn pro. Mm-hmm. And it brings a whole flock of new people into the realm. Every four years that happens. Now, it, it's coming to fruition. That now we got all these fights on the same day in different locations. This is perfect. It's perfect. It could be about, you know, HBO doing three fights. That's perfect. Hmm. You know, so you can't beat that. I mean, boxing is alive and well. Yeah. You don't see uh, three MMA fights on one day, mm-hmm. you know? That's true. And you mentioned the Olympics. What do you think of Team USA? Men. The men version of the team. They, they stunk. Yeah, what's going on? Because, listen, they don't have the right trainers. How are you going to have people train these guys and girls when they only spend about a month with them. Yeah. Why don't they have their own trainers who they started out with? Weird. You know, training them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Training them like that. They, they, they wasn't taught to do anything. That was a disgrace. No. Yeah. They just you know, looked, They weren't taught anything. They were just out of their element. Oh, please. And, and, and the competition wasn't that hard. No. Yeah. You know, wasn't that, I mean, there was some robberies, but not on the American side. There was one, and then they had the, the decency to overturn it and give it mm-hmm. to the American. But then he lost. Yep. You know, so, I mean, it, the amateur program is so disoriented that, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, like, like, but like everything else, it's political. And these kids don't have more. They don't. They don't have a hundred fights anymore. And you know, it's like I don't know. The the they don't go international as much as they used to. There's so many problems. It's like where do you start? Well, number one, you know, it all starts with uh, the farm team. Yep. You know, you can have a farm team. They don't. There's no tournaments. You know, international tournaments. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. It's just every every man or woman for himself in the boxing in the boxing world. How good how good is Sergio Martinez? He's fighting Julio Cesar Chavez. He, yeah, Sergio's an excellent fighter. Yeah, excellent fighter, but no doubt. But uh, uh, do I think he's going to be Chavez? No, I don't. Well, so. I think Chavez is going to be too big and too strong for him. And that's what I'm hearing. You know, Chavez really surprised me in the Andy Lee fight. Mm-hmm. Where he just ripped shot to the body and broke Andy Lee down. Yeah. I'm very impressed. You know, I love body shot. That's my forte. Yeah, and you his know? dad was one of the best. <laughs> yeah, I worked hard. 
Yeah, what you know, you? so I just think he's going to be too strong. He's going to put the pressure on uh, Marquise. He's going to make a fight. Yeah. He's going to make a fight. Yep, yeah, going to be a good one. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. And then they get the other fight they're going to have on the same day. That's stupid. Yeah. You know, that's stupid. Yep. You know, that, that that's is another, another case. Fine. And they're both left in a high way, too. Yeah, but of course, that, you know, I can see that that fight was in another location as far as another city, even another country. Mm-hmm. They got it in Vegas on the same day. I mean, that's stupid. No. That is stupid. Yep. You know, and stupid. You got two of the biggest emotional companies battling against each other, which I think that's so asinine. Mm-hmm. They don't know that they're killing boxing from inside. Hmm. You know, and they talk like, you know, they don't know who's killing boxing. Look in the mirror. That's right. That's yeah. all it is. No. That's true. And I thought those guys were, were, were a lot smarter than what they are. Nope. You know, it's just okay. stupid. Stupid. I'm, I'm just, I'm surprised that all those guys. When you're when you're smart like like you and I are, it, it's it's shocking when when people just don't have it. <laughs> They're just exactly. I mean, it's, yeah. it's stupid. It's asinine. Those yeah. guys to do things like that. That's true. So having two pay per view fights, no, well, not a pay per view. One is pay per view on the same day in the same town. Yep. I mean, what's up with that? I, I hear yeah, also that the a lot of people are actually going to go to the uh, Canelo fight because the undercard is a lot better. Just, you know, that's what I'm hearing. It's, it's just gonna, I think it's going to hurt the sport having those two fights on the same day. On the same, on the same yeah. like, area. Yeah, no, no doubt. I, I mean, that's unheard of. That's unheard of. You know, two high profile fights like that to be on the same day in the same town. Hmm. You know, it's so stupid. You know, it's stupid. And then they, the, the people that are doing the, those two shows, they sit back and wonder what's happening with boxing why is boxing dying because it's up to the those guys all they gotta do is look at the man in the mirror that's all that's, and that's all that's so so crazy so crazy and and and, and the Nevada the, the State Athletic Commission they should have stepped in yeah they should have stepped in and do something about that yeah. they don't have the balls to step in and do nothing about that yeah, yeah. all about the money Sometimes it's so just... They but. don't have the balls to step in and say, look at man. You know, you do this show this date, and you do this show, this is your date. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And these guys, you know, everybody want to be helping box. I'm talking about the, even the, the commissions. They're not helping boxing. You know, top ranks not helping boxing. Golden board not helping boxing. They, they are so full of hot air, it's unreal. No. It's unreal. See, I don't bite my tongue. I don't mm-hmm. bite my tongue. Not for no one. You know, you know they, they, they are so asinine. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, to, to do fights of that magnitude on the same day in the same town. Yep. You know, they are stupid. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Spreading themselves Daddy, too just, thin. Just to go back to the, uh, to the Olympics, uh, you know, R- Rashid Warren, he uh, was the first American to you know, to go to three Olympics. But do you think that he maybe made the wrong decision to be the last Olympics since he he, he went all for three in the three Olympics? What what do you think about that? Well, you know what? I think he made a big mistake. And and again, listen, he's got a weight where it's not very popular. Mm-hmm. The only guy that made that weight popular was uh, Michael Carbajal. And, and uh, Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez, those guys made the way, but those guys are, are retired now. Yeah. Right. That's not going to happen again. And I don't think he can carry it like that. Hmm. Well. And uh, out of the Olympics that you saw in the American team, which one do you think has the uh, most potential? So none. Maybe even, well, none. 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 Okay. None. I like the young lady. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. She got heart. You know, mm-hmm. she. I like her attitude. You know, mm-hmm. she, she. She. That's why she won the gold medal. Just seventeen. Clarissa and so all the, those other Olympians, oh, they were, they were there just to show up. Yeah, 
The girls did so represent. Just to show up. The girls did represent. <laughs> Got to give it to the girls. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, I mean, listen, my, my hat is off to her. You mm-hmm. know, the, the, the way she fought, she had the attitude like, you know, you're going to have to kill me to, to win this gold medal. And I want to so go. She took care yeah. of business. The guys, they just showed up. They yeah. just came in there and showed up. They didn't do anything. Yeah. Talking about the misfortune of our amateur boxers, let's talk about one of the great amateurs and turn into a pretty good pro, too. What'd you think of uh, the American debut of Gennady Golovkin last Saturday? Did you catch it? Yeah, the killer. That guy's a killer, man. He, mm. That guy, he's not playing. Nope. Yeah, he, that's the guy that I can see being a world champion in probably like 10, 11 fights. Yeah. But legitimate, fighting legitimate contenders, not managers and promoters paying attention and bodies to boost his ratings. This guy can fight. Yep. That he can is. flat out fight. You don't, you don't need nobody to uh, pay the attention and bodies to uh, boost him in the rankings. Just give him those guys in front of him. He'll take care of him. No problem. Yeah, he was totally impressive. <laughs> totally. Very impressive. Very impressive. Never off balance. Absolutely never. Yeah, what, fight would, what, what fight would you like to see him against? Like Chavez, Martinez? Mm. Anybody like that? I'd like to see him fight uh, uh, either Chavez or Martinez or any that would be of up. the leading contenders in the uh, those sanctioned bodies. If Chavez beats Martinez, Golovkin Chavez is a must. Oh, it's a must. must. That, that would be that just like two pit bulls. Yeah, let me tell you something. I, I'm, look here. I was never impressed with Chavez until his last yeah. fight. Yep, yep. He just turned it up. He took it to another level. Mm, yep. And he look, looked fantastic in his last fight. I, I was oh, surprised too. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I think that... Uh, if Martinez stands in front of him, mm-hmm. Chavez is going to get him up out of with them body shots. Yeah, Golovkin comes from that part of the world where there's tons of talent right now in the pro ranks. What, what do you think about Vitaly Klitschko? How, how good is Vitaly in terms of what in the pantheon of heavyweights, I guess? Oh, he's a great heavyweight. So both of those Klitschko brothers are going to be great heavyweights. You know, both of them will enter the Hall of Fame. You know, it's, it's very simple. They're too big, too strong, too physical, and too well gifted for anybody to beat those guys right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's basically they have size, they have power, they got everything. I mean, why do you think? Was, why do you think they don't get the respect that that other longtime champions get? There's a lot of people who who don't care to see them fight and don't talk so nice about them. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, boxing started, in, if I'm not mistaken, in America. I think it started you know in England. You know, and they, <laughs> we've held the world title, when I'm saying American, I mm. mean, we practically invented the world heavyweight championship. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, you know, as years go on, there's uh, vitamins taken here, supplements taken there, steroids taken here. Steroids taken there, you know, make your body big and stronger. I'm not saying that they take steroids, but those guys, you know, they're like rocks. Yep. And, and, and they work hard. They work hard, but they got the physical height, yeah. reach. They got everything in their favor. And they came up in a real tough part of the world too. They, oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. So my hand is off to those guys. They, they put in the work. Yeah. They put in the work. Mm-hmm. They got uh, 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 Manuel Stewart. They got a few American trained before they settled with Emmanuel, but uh, they would they learn the, the American way how to fight. Then the legs gonna be so straight up. Yeah, and I didn't want to let you go without. You're a New York guy. What do you think about Fifty Cent getting into the promoting business with Floyd? That's my guy. I talk to Fifty all the time. He's good. Let me tell you something. It's going to be good for boxing because what's going to happen is he's going to bring all the, uh, uh, basically all the mainstream, all the young uh, audiences to the fight. Yep. And, and again, he's also going to bring all the Hollywood celebrities to the 
like, you know, guys like De Niro, Pesci, all those guys, they, they'll be at the fight. It's just going to bring a whole different crowd to the fight. Yeah. And that's the crowd that, you know, boxers missing. I can't wait to see what happens. I'm excited about it. I don't have I don't have fifties ear like you do. Could you tell them to watch how they do it in England and stuff and, and at the big fights in England? We <laughs> He's a good guy. He's a good guy. One thing about him, listen, if he gets into a situation, he's 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 head first and he wants to learn. You know, I see him hitting the heavy bag and hitting mm-hmm. the speed bag. He's he's really, you know, up on that. He wants to be the complete promoter and I wish him all the luck. He's a good guy. Plus he's a New York He's cool. Yeah, you got a root for him. I just, I just oh, without hope. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I just want to see more flash in the game when the fighters are entering the ring, like they do oh. in Europe and stuff. It's so much more exciting to see. I can never understand why why Roy wouldn't want to go to Europe and fight. You know, all, all the guys that he missed out on fighting in England, because I would love to fight in front of like eighty thousand people, hundred thousand oh, people. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, listen. The championship is not yours. You only have it for a certain period of time. It's not yours. If you call yourself a champion, you're supposed to go around the world. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If you're a champion, you can beat every man in your division. You're supposed to beat them all. And no matter where the ring is situated at, you know, the ring is your home. You have to defend that no matter where it's at. Yeah. You know, he missed out on a lot of things. A lot of money he missed out on. But, you know, listen... If he can do it all over again, I think he just do it the same way. He was, he was a great fighter. Yeah. yeah you know, so, yeah, my hat is off to him also. He was a great fighter. Eddie yeah, Mustafa Muhammad, I wish you luck. You and Haseem Rockman on September 29th. What? Just answer one. What motivates Haseem Rockman still? What's going to motivate him to? Is, is it purely the the anger at how they treated him, or or? Well, that that's a big part of it. You know, and he you know he wants to be on that three-time heavyweight champion list. You know, mm-hmm. so that's, that's a, a verified rare air up there. You know, Ali, mm-hmm. you know, guys like that. So he wants to be in that in that, that clique, which I don't blame him. All he got to do is stick to the kick game plan and beat this kid up. And believe me, I, I'm, I'm so confident, you know, barring a cut or anything like that, that we'll, we'll, we'll stop a victim. Yep. Good luck, Eddie. You're great. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, guys.